In this video, I'm going to show you how you can build your own circle matrix interaction. So I recently saw a post over at the Adobe eLearning community site, and uh, it was about the uh, learning interaction that's built into Captivate, the circle matrix. And the concern from the user was that they couldn't customize the labels and they couldn't customize the content as much as I think they would have liked. So what I'm going to show you today is my workaround, my solution to building something that's truly customizable and of course of your own design. So let's take a look at my screen right now. So as you can see, I built this particular circle matrix. Uh, again, you can customize it a number of different ways. The first thing you might wonder to yourself is how did I get this shape here? These half circle shapes for item two and item three. Let me show you something that a lot of people don't know about shapes in Adobe Captivate. If I right click on this perfectly circular shape here, I can select convert to free form and you'll notice the selection handles change from white to black. And what that means is I can literally grab the selection handles and instead of resizing the shape, literally change the shape of the shape. So let me bring first of all this top portion down to the middle here and of course I'm going to have uh, some success here. Maybe it might be limited, but we'll find out. So I'll let go here. Now, obviously that's not a half circle, but if I select the two selection handles on the right and change the, uh, the lines here, I can actually get this to be very close, if not exactly straight across here. Let's just take a look and maybe I'll line this one up here. That's pretty good. We'll select this selection handle. I might have to right click and edit points again. And we'll grab this one here and bring it straight across so that I know it's as straight across as I'm gonna get it. And I might have to play with these a little bit, but this is essentially what I did here. Let's just grab that craziness there. Maybe that's the going the wrong way. Let's see here. No, that's right. So I could actually take this out further if I want to ensure that it's as straight as I can get it. Uh, holding down the shift key doesn't work as you might instinctively think. But uh, once you have this in the right spot, you can just bring it down. That's pretty close. Uh, if I had more time to play around with it, I could do that here. So I won't. Uh, we'll save you the boringness uh, of watching me do that. But that's essentially what I did for these two shapes here. Now, in this case here, the default learning interaction that the poster is originally talking about was that, you know, he didn't want numbers. He wanted actual some kind of labels here. And there's nothing to say you couldn't do that. These are all multi-stage uh, objects. If we go into state view, you can see that I've just added a secondary shape. This could just as easily be a rectangle with a word in it instead of a number. Uh, but this is, uh, is fairly straightforward. Now to make this work, I've got these four buttons here. They lay over top of one another. There is a little bit of an issue with rollover and, and clicking on these because of course, even though these are half circles and circles, uh, your button is still based on the bounding boxes of those objects. So uh, it's nice to have the rollover effect to be sure that you are moving your mouse over the right object. but. There is going to be some overlay on this. That said, th th I think the interaction still works rather well. And uh, what we need, of course, first of all, is obviously these are buttons. They have their various multi states. So here's the normal state. The rollover is a little bit of a brighter color. And I've added a custom state called selected. 
so that I can identify which of the four buttons has been pressed when a learner presses those buttons and it becomes very obvious. The next thing I'm going to need is I'm going to need four variables to keep track of this. And that's because I'm going to hide my next button and not make it available until the learner has pressed all four buttons. So we're going to go into the project drop down menu and select variables. And simply put, we're going to create variables called underscore button 01. I'm going to copy that formatting, press save, and click on add new again here. And we'll change that to two. Press save, add new, three, save, add new, four, and press save. I can close the variables window now and I need to write my first advanced action. So I'm going to select the project drop down menu again and write advanced actions. And I'm going to call this one button 01. And I'm going to first of all assign button 01 with the literal value of 1. So I've I'm keeping track that I've pressed that button. And I'm going to need to change the state of all of my buttons on this slide. So change the state of button one to selected. But in case this isn't the first button that I'm pressing, I'm going to change the state of button two back to normal change the state of button three back to normal and change the state of button four back to normal. Now in the event that my multi-state object, this has got four different states here, uh, in the event that it's not presently visible because when you arrive on this slide, this object is not visible in output, I'm going to show that object and it's called circle matrix multi-state and we're going to change the multi-state object itself to normal which is step number one associated with button one. Now I'm going to go over to my second tab. We can call this first tab something meaningful like pressing the button <laughs> and uh, we're going to check to see if we're complete on this interaction. So we'll just call tab number two check. This is going to be a conditional advanced action. And remember what we did first off on the first tab, we assigned button one. That's our variable for button one, a value of one. There are three other variables that we're going to work with as well. And in each case, we're going to be assigning a value of one to those when we press those buttons. So in other words, if the variable button one is equal to the literal value of one, I'm going to copy this, save myself some typing here, and I'm going to paste it in four times for the four buttons and then just change which variable I'm pointing at. So if button one is equal to one and button two is equal to one and button three is equal to one and button four is equal to one, I want to show this next button down here. So I'm going to write the action for show and select my next button, which is right there. Now you might be thinking to yourself, that's a lot of steps for one button. The great news is, is that this is relatively easy to replicate for the three re remaining buttons. So I'm going to save this as an action first, and I'm going to use this little tiny button in the upper right hand corner called duplicate action. We'll press that. It makes an exact copy of this advanced action. I'm going to give it a new proper name. So button two, we'll go back to press here and we're working with button two variable. 
Now we're changing the state of our four buttons. In this case, we're going to put button one back to normal and show the selected state for button two. Button three and button four will remain the same. This action remains the same because we're going to show the multi-state object where the content is stored, but we are going to change the state of the circle matrix multi-state object to number two. Nothing to update here on the check. So I can just press update action, click OK, and we can duplicate this once more. So this time we'll call it button three. And we are going to update the variable for button three. And we're going to return our other object back to normal. And the button for button three will be selected. And we will show step number three. Update that action. Click OK and duplicate it once more. So this will now be button four. So we're going to update our variable for button four. We're going to return all of our buttons back to normal and show the selected state for button four. And over here on our multi-state object, we'll set that up for step number four or button number four's content. Update that action, click OK. And you can see now we have all four of our existing advanced actions created. So I can go ahead and close this now. All I need to do is make sure that my multi-state object is set for not visible in output. And my next button we're also going to make sure that it's also not visible in output. And you could have other buttons here like back or home or whatever else you have in your course. So now let's select button one and we'll go to the actions tab and we'll select execute advanced actions. And of course we'll select button one as the script we're going to use. Now I'll select button number two execute advanced actions, in this case, button number two. We'll select button number three, execute advanced actions, button number three, and button four, which is behind all the other buttons here, execute advanced actions, and button four. So I think we're good to test this out. Let's preview this in HTML5. All right, so here's our circle matrix slide. You could include some instructions here to tell people what to do, but as you roll over the different objects, you can click on item one, then we'll click on item two, and of course it returns the original one back to normal. Um, and of course we're seeing the updated content over here. Just remember there is a point because basically all of your objects are actually squares, where the rollover for, you know, item three doesn't quite work as you would expect. So uh, you'll just have to get used to that, but pretty much everything else should work fine. And of course, your next button will show up only once you've selected uh, all four of your buttons here. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.